My name is Howard Oransky. I'm Lynn Lucas. We organized an exhibition called Covered in Time and History, the films of Anna Mendieta. Anna Mendieta's films had been seen before in different exhibitions, but I wanted to do an exhibition that really changed how we look at the films and made the films the central focus of the exhibition as a way to, in a sense, reframe how the films are seen and understood. Our hope was to situate her film work within the sort of larger pantheon of experimental filmmaking of her time. I think her work is really about this intimate investigation of what it means to be human. And I do mean intimate because we're talking about someone who uses her body in contact with the elements of the world, you know, the elements of the earth. And she's dealing with these very big problems, these very big philosophical questions, uh, in part because of her own personal and political biography. She grew up in Cuba and in 1961, after the revolution, she was sent away from her family and her home to the United States with her older sister. In a sense, she was sent into a kind of cultural exile. But I think her work in using herself as a subject matter and her life as subject matter and her relationship to the earth and her own body are really fundamental in the history of feminist filmmaking and feminist experimental filmmaking. Because of the um, wonderful access provided to us by the estate of Anna Mendieta and Gallery Lalong, which represents the estate, to Mendieta's films, making them available to us and digitizing them for the exhibition and restoring them in this very meticulous way we could actually look at this entire arc of work that she had done in the filmic medium of this 10-year period from 1971 to 1981 when she made 104 films. One of the other things the project did was to really establish a filmography of her work which never existed prior to this. That was really, really important too because all that work then sort of entered in the historical record. Which I think is really, in the long term, maybe the most important part of what we've done because it provides a foundation for future research and for future curators and art historians. And then of course in the process of the project there were new films found or new films that came to the fore. So there's a kind of visual unearthing or a kind of visual archaeology that happened in the midst of the project um, that was not expected. It's a complicated process. It almost takes on a life of its own. It almost becomes this kind of living, breathing thing that exerts its own influence on you as you are shaping it. I was excited about the idea and I thought other people are going to be excited about the idea. But I must say that the project has been received um, with a great deal of excitement. It was a big surprise. <laughs> its reception was a big surprise because it started out as a national tour that started at the Nash Gallery. Along the way, other venues were included, and so now there's a whole international um, tour of the exhibition, which included an exhibition in Umeå, Sweden, in Berlin, and now next fall at the Jeu de Palme in Paris. You know, there's such interest. It was amazing at the Martin Gropius Bau in Berlin. At the opening, there were people lined up down the block, and I mean, for blocks to get in to see this exhibition. So it was, it was quite heartening. It's been really spectacular. It's sort of taken on a life of its own, and it's become a very, significant and important international exhibition. So I think that does credit to her work, the interest and the importance of her work, of Anna Mendieta's work. We are fortunate to receive early and significant financial support from the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, our college here at the University of Minnesota. And without that very early decisive financial commitment, uh, I don't think we could have succeeded.